Polyrath versus Politoed, a matchup that I have been curious about since I first learned about a new Poliwhirl evolution playing Pokemon Gold and Crystal as a kid. Well today, let me share with you my experience of finally scratching that itch. I will be defeating Pokemon Fire Red, including the Round 2 Elite Four, with Polyrath and Politoed individually, starting with them fully evolved to find out who is the true king of the Tadpoles. At first glance, I was worried that these two would be too similar of a run to make an interesting versus video. Boy was I wrong. What you're about to see is one of my most frustrating runs to date, which led me down a dark, dark road. But if there's one thing that I'm good at, it's learning from my mistakes. I want to share my journey with you so that I can let you in on why I'm so excited to reveal these results. Buckle in everyone, we have a lot to cover. As always though, in Pokemon games, we start from humble beginnings. Welcome to Polyrath's initial playthrough. I wanted these two Pokemon to have as even a playing field as I could muster in an RNG heavy game. So first, we roll a die. 1 to 10 for Polyrath, 11 to 20 for Politoed for who plays first. 3 means Polyrath goes first, obviously. Following the first rival battle in Professor Oak's lab, I'll start by talking about an idea that I had for these races. Every Pokémon will have a sticking point somewhere in the game, so in a Versus-style video I wanted to attempt to even out the playing field by adding a little extra flavor. This being an exceptional channel with excellent egg-centric content, I thought it'd be fun to give myself access to a single egg move per Pokémon. In this run, Polyrath will be starting with Ice Ball, an Ice-type move that functions just like Rollout. It starts with a low power, then doubles each turn it hits up to 5 times, the drawback being that the move only has 90% accuracy. This move will accelerate Polyrath through the early game, not that it needed much help. Against Brock, Polyrath has no problem at all. Brock's Geodude and Onyx can't hold a candle against Polyrath's early game Torrent. Both of his Pokémon are four times weak to Water Gun, so despite coming into this fight at only level 7, we easily take out both of his Pokémon. I'll quickly show Ice Ball in action against Bug Catcher James. You can see the damage increase, as well as the fact that once selected, Ice Ball will do work without any additional inputs from me until it ends or it misses like it also does here against the Metapod. A pretty cool move for getting some early game speed. Coming into Cerulean, I want to fight Misty first. Getting access to the Water Pulse TM from defeating her will grant us a 60 base power stab water move that may confuse instead of the 40 base power water gun. In this first battle though, I notice something a little odd. Water Absorb isn't absorbing? Quick, call Mr. Clean, I think this sponge is faulty! We end up resetting and I double check Polyrath. No, I don't want damp. Whoops, let me fix that quickly. There we go. I wound up resetting once more here to some bad luck, but in this battle the Staryu goes down without any troubles and I decide to use Hypnosis against the Starmie. This gives Ice Ball enough time to ramp up enough damage that Starmie falls after healing from full with a crit. A lucky win for sure, but playthrough 1 is all about learning. Jumping straight ahead to Rival 2, we get a little bit of an easier time. Despite a turn 1 sand attack from Pidgeotto, our Ice Ball gathers power and doesn't miss throughout the fight. Brad just unleashed his wrath on Spacey. Then on the SSN, Rival 3 revealed what was in the box and we wipe twice before coming into this battle. Using Ice Ball is not a perfectly consistent strategy, but it is effective when it works, and more importantly, it's fast. Lieutenant Surge is honestly the one battle in the early game that I was most worried about for Brad. We have a type weakness, so I make sure to heal up and equip my Cherry Berry. On the SSN, I picked up a little something something for Polyrath that I predict will be on our moveset for the foreseeable future. TM31 Brick Break. Surge's Pokémon all have fairly weak physical defense, so despite the risk of static paralyzing us, Brad's going for the knockouts. Voltorb and Pikachu are easy one-shots. We come into Raichu at full health and with our berry intact. Let's see how much Brick Break does. Ah, oh, so close! Raichu hangs on with a sliver while Static paralyzes us, chewing up our berry. Lieutenant Surge heals with a Super Potion that doesn't quite bring Raichu back to full, allowing Brad to Brick Break the Electric Mouse. That was a lot less scary than I thought it would be. I don't want to leave Politoed behind, so let's see how it's doing with the early game. For Slippy, I decided to use the egg move Ice Ball as well. I think that it's going to be even more beneficial for Politoed, as it's slightly more inclined towards special attack compared to Polyrath, who's more physical. The stat differences are fairly marginal between the two, but one is clearly more physically focused than the other, particularly when you look into their learn sets, but we'll touch more on that later. 
With our higher special stats though, if Brock was easy for Polyrath, then he's gonna be... What's easier than easy? Beginner? Casual? Sure, Brock will be a casual battle for Politoed. We move on without delay. Mount Moon holds nothing but a rare candy and some Ammonite that I have to pick up to progress. Wait, Ammonite? Omanite? I think I might have just learned something. I'll take a moment to contemplate that while Politoed learns Mega Punch from the tutor. Both Pokémon learn this, as for the early game water types, I'd say it's darn near mandatory. Slippy also goes straight for Misty because Water Pulse will be even more beneficial for our little Toad. Part of the fun of making these videos is learning random things along the way. Poly Toad is the frog Pokémon, which makes sense with its smooth, slimy skin, because Toads are dry and warty. So why is it Poly Toad, not Poly Frog? I suppose Poly Toad sounds better. Mirroring Polyrath, I do get two resets against Misty before taking her down. I guess that tangential thought process distracted me from focusing on the battle. Staryu falls with us still at our maximum 69 health. Nice. I nearly get the KO from our ramped up Ice Ball bringing Starmie into deep red. I predicted a heal so I put it to sleep, but it stays low allowing us to take it down on the next turn. At the start of the Rival 2 fight, we see once again the drawback of Ice Ball. I missed twice in a row, fortunately without taking any sand attacks from Pidgeotto along the way. We finally hit and take it down, followed by a hit and a KO for Bulbasaur. Abra is free, and the Rattata is only risky because of its chip damage and priority quick attack, neither of which we're worried about. On the SSN, Rival 3 doesn't pose much of a threat. I'd say that this battle was roughly one of the worst outcomes of luck, but Slippy barrel rolls through with just under half health remaining. This of course brings us once again to Surge. I do my prep, equip my berry, and decided that using Ice Ball would be the best way through. In this case, I'm right, even with us managing to be affected by Static twice. The first time our berry cures it, and the second was on the last turn of the battle. As Raichu falls, I let out a sigh of relief. We are in the mid-game. Let's take a quick moment to review how both of our competitors have done so far. Polyrath defeated Brock at 4 minutes on the dot, with Politoed finishing 9 seconds slower. Polyrath then cleared Misty at 9 minutes and 36 seconds, widening the gap, with Politoed now behind by 29 seconds. But due to some unfortunate resorts, Polyrath defeated Surge at 25 minutes and 58 seconds, allowing Politoed to rocket ahead at 20 minutes and 6 seconds, a full 5.52 ahead of Polyrath. Make no mistake though, these runs are far from over. Politoed's plan for the mid-game is gaining access to more powerful, diverse moves. After Rock Tunnel and some quick chores in Celadon, I clear out the Rocket Hideout and shoot over to Saffron for TM29 Psychic. There are a lot of poison types that lie ahead of us, so this move is going to give us a great option against all of them. Against Rival 4 in Pokemon Tower, we start to see just how good Slippy is at this point in the game. We have a diverse, reasonably powerful moveset and absolutely crush this battle. From there, I'm targeting the Rival again as we head into Sylph. I'm not doing any additional grinding or item collection on this run so far. A fact that will come back to bite me eventually. We come into the Rival 5 battle at level 39. Ice Ball has been working a treat so far, so let's click it. Pidgeot takes three turns to knock down, allowing Ice Ball's power to increase to 240 against the Venusaur. We hit, it faints. Ice Ball has one more hit to deal out against Gyarados, who also gets knocked down in one shot. Growlithe gets one shot by Water Pulse, and out comes Alakazam. I dance between Return and Water Pulse, but take down the Psy Pokemon, having only lost about a quarter of Slippy's max HP. I guess you could say that I was feeling a little overconfident at this point. I jump straight into the Giovanni fight without healing. I haven't taught Psychic yet as I don't want to consume the TM until it's necessary. I then beat up Giovanni's Nidorino and Nidoqueen, but I'm only at 59 health coming into Kangaskhan. Now Giovanni shows us his true talent as a trainer. I put Kanga to sleep and go for Ice Ball because I wanted to conserve PP on other moves. Zero other thought put in. This results in Kanga taking us down to two hit points. He then switches into Tail Whips until we knock him down, bringing out the final Rhyhorn who we outspeed and one shot with Water Pulse. Is it just me or is Giovanni just not the greatest villain when it comes to creating engaging challenges to overcome? After the lessons that I learned from my Clefairy video, I wanted to keep Politoed as a mixed attacker coming into Sabrina. The proof is in the pudding here as Slippy cleans up our fifth gym badge, though things were getting a little rough near the end. 
I then clear the safari zone and along the way teach substitute from the tutor in front of the Kanga pen. After clearing the mandatory trainers in Koga's gym, I teach psychic over return, maximizing our time between poke centers. Koga's Pokemon are falling away while Muck manages to land a toxic, poisoning Slippy badly. Coming into the Ace Weezing, I wasn't very scared until it survived with a sliver, lowers our accuracy, and that toxic damage is really starting to stack up. We miss our next two psychics, sealing our fate and taking a reset. As it so happens, I just learned the solution to this problem. Substitute. No more accuracy problems, no more poison problems. We make it back to the Ace Weezing, and this time it gets a special defense drop on the first turn, guaranteeing the following one-shot. Much better. Erica is the last gym leader before having to go swimming, but since I've left her so late again, Slippy takes her down with ease. I even used Water Pulse turn 1 for the flex. Definitely wasn't a misclick. Alright, it's clear that Politoed was built to break the mid-game, so let's see if Polyrath is finding any way to catch up yet. Coming straight out of Rock Tunnel, our top priority is getting TM27 Return. This is a high PP, strong physical move that will only grow in power as Polyrath and I continue to grow into the best of buds. From there, we're going to follow pretty much the same route as Politoed, starting with Celadon Shores and clearing out the Rocket Hideout. Can I just mention how satisfying the first Giovanni encounter is with Polyrath? The Rock Pokémon are so peripheral because it's all about that Kanga. Something about laying down some stab, super effective Brick Breaks just feels good here. Back in Lavender Town, let's check out the Rival 4 battle so that we can really start seeing Polyrath and Politoed's paths start to diverge concerning moveset. Also, if you look closely at the start of the battle, you'll see both of my cheerleaders have status conditions. This is because I put them to sleep when I caught them, right after Misty. Polyrath has still not needed to go to a Pokemon Center. Rival 4 is typically not a threatening fight, but slowly introduces difficulty and team diversity over time. This is a very well-balanced way of progressing towards the struggles to come. Polyrath is becoming more of a physical bruiser and smashes through Pidgeotto, Kadabra, and even Ivysaur without blinking. But when Gyarados hits the field, it intimidates us and we're given a firm reminder of why Polyrath might have a slight disadvantage to Politoed against the Bulbasaur-themed rival team. Gyarados and Growlithe both have Intimidate, which will reduce our attack by two stages and is unavoidable. For now. The effects of only minus one show as Polyrath takes three hits to knock out a Gyarados that's 12 levels beneath it before finishing off Growlithe. I could have used Water Pulse, but I was interested in the damage we'd be doing at minus two. Our next major moveset upgrade lies here in Silphco. This TM08 has been nothing but cash to us until this run. TM8 is bulk up. It raises a Pokemon's attack and defense by one stage. I'm sure you know where this leads next. Rival 5 is going to be our test platform for our new move. So excited to get some setup going and Pidgeot Feather Dance's turn 1. Rude. Alright, I just need to set up a little bit more and we can... Oh. Hi Meowth! Right, Pidgeot has Whirlwind, I remember that from the Bulbasaur run. How about we just knock this thing out? Or it could knock us out. This really didn't go how I saw it in my head. Ah, uh, Rival 5 is lame anyway, let's go check out Fuchsia. On Cycling Road in both runs, I've come just down the easternmost path to grab the hidden rare candy and then the Max Elixir at the bottom of the route. I learn Substitute, do the Safari Zone, and that brings us to Koga. We set up a sub turn 1 and start using Bulk Up. I set all the way up to plus 6. Oh yeah, feels good. Get that pump. A single Brick Break takes out Coughing and we're off. Alright, Muck, no problem. We Brick Break and Muck barely holds on setting up Minimize. We go for Water Pulse for Chip, but oh wow, my PP is looking kind of dire. Oh wow, it really is, especially when we aren't hitting. Okay, pause. I'll spare you my suffering. We fail. Bam! Next battle. I used an ether on Brick Break, got set up, and here is the battle that I was looking for against Koga. Man, why couldn't I get the setup I wanted? Bulking up is hard. Maybe I just need more proteins. Next, I come back to Erica's gym because it might as well clear it now. Victory Bell is dead set on paralyzing my substitute, so after Brad finishes a moderate workout in the background, we sweep her team for our fifth gym badge. Okay, 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 back to Rival 5, but this time for realsies. Something that becomes apparent very quickly is that Pidgeot is a hard Pokemon to set up against for Polyrath. If it wasn't the accuracy in Feather Dances before, it's the damage output from super effective Wing Attack. We only managed to get plus 3 with a quarter health and a slightly bruised sub before knocking it down. Alakazam is physically frail and falls to one resisted Brick Break. Venusaur comes out and also falls to two more Brick Breaks. 
Gyarados is next, and from behind the sub we also avoid the Intimidate. We aren't doing enough damage to one shot, so it breaks our sub with Twister, leaving us a little exposed. We can't resub because our health is too low, so we're on our own now. Luckily, it's only Growlithe in the back, so we knock it down too. Against Sabrina, we have a type disadvantage, and she is stacked with fast, extremely hard-hitting psychic types. Kadabra knows Kinesis, so I want to avoid that and undo damage, so I set up a substitute. I know from experience that her first two Pokémon like setting up, so I risk a bulk up. Kadabra uses Reflect, which might be worrying, but we use Brick Break, taking it down. A very cool mechanic of Brick Break is that it shatters screens like Reflect or Light Screen. So cool. Mr. Mime loves setting up too, so I get in one more bulk up before knocking it out. The biggest threat Alakazam is out. I would wager that this thing could knock us out from darn near full health if we aren't careful- Oh, hi Venomoth! Did I miss Alakazam? We take out Venomoth over a few hits and yeah, that's the battle! Let's see how our two competitors are doing so far. I'll be posting these as badge 4, 5, and 6, because these two Pokémon did slightly different routes through this section of the game. There's a little bit of bouncing around because of the different order of completion, but we're squared back off going into Cinnabar with Politoed leading by 10 minutes and 3 seconds. Against Blaine, I don't have any worries for Poliwrath. Against the lead Growlithe, I begin setting up to plus 4 from behind my subs. This should guarantee our victor- Son of a stupid roar! Okay, let's take out Growlithe immediately, then we'll set up against Ponyta. This goes much, much better, and despite our low health, Poliwrath manages to get back up to plus four before taking it out. Rapidash falls and Arcanine comes out intimidating us. This is why I went to plus four, because at plus three we still get a one-shot. Phew, that was a little close for comfort. I defeat only the two mandatory trainers in Giovanni's gym before taking him on. Against Rhyhorn I sub, avoiding a scary face, and then I set up to plus two and knock it out. From there, let's see what happens. I'm confident that because Brick Break is resisted, I won't get one-shots on the Nidos, but because of Bulk Up, also increasing our defense stat, I'm not too worried about them. Nidoqueen's Earthquake didn't even break our sub. We polish off his last Pokémon, and Poliwrath has done the gym challenge at 1 hour, 4 minutes, and 14 seconds. Jumping straight ahead to Rival 6, I'm setting up against Bird Brains here again. We managed to get to plus 3 before needing to knock it out. I hope that that's enough. Alakazam falls in 1 using only Future Sight, but when we get to Venusaur, our damage is too limited to take it down before it knocks us out with Razor Leaf. Fair enough, we are 3 levels lower than it. I end up wiping once more before going to do some additional training. I come back into the fight at level 53 over the next damage rounding threshold. I get a little risky setting all the way up to plus 5 before taking out Pidgeot with only 10 HP remaining, but behind a sub. Alakazam only uses Future Sight again and we knock it out, but then Venusaur comes out breaking our sub with Razor Leaf. We're now super exposed with a Future Sight incoming. And yep, there it is. I take a few more resets and eventually level up to 58 before this attempt. Because of my higher level, Pidgeot no longer seems dead set on only using Wing Attack, so our sub actually soaks up a Feather Dance. I continue setting up and Pidgeot gets a crit Wing Attack, taking us down to 58 health. I'm done playing around here, so I knock it out. We now outspeed Alakazam, taking it out and eliminating that threat. Venusaur is out and honestly, I think that if I hadn't crit here, we would have lost again. From there though, Growlithe, Rhyhorn, and Gyarados each fall with Gyarados granting us a boon and some healing from Hydro Pump. Poliwrath enters the League doors at 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 55 seconds. Let's see how Politoed handles the last two gyms and the road to the League. Against Blaine, I use Sub for some safety and then plow through his whole team with Water Pulse. I haven't taught Surf to Politoed as I don't want the HM move clogging up my moveset unnecessarily. Then, in the Giovanni battle, I fire off Water Pulses again until we win. Things get a little dicey near the end as the Needle King poisoned us with his Poison Point ability, but Politoed prevails, completing the gym challenge in under an hour at 53 minutes and 35 seconds. Incredible. Before jumping into Rival 6, I run over to Celadon to spend our coins and pick up TM13 Ice Beam for Politoed. Aw yeah. I stay hidden behind a sub to prevent accuracy loss and take out Pidgeot. Against the Venusaur, it's clear that if we'd been two levels higher, we'd be getting the two-shot here. Rhyhorn obviously gets one shot, and Gyarados comes out to grant Politoed a boon as well, healing us with Hydro Pump and I think guaranteeing the victory. It takes a few turns, but we knock it down. Growlithe falls and Alakazam comes out. We're starting to see Slippy fall off in raw power in this fight, which is a little bit concerning coming into the league. Alakazam does some decent damage to us, but we take another victory. 
Politoed enters the league doors at 58 minutes and 53 seconds, just over 21 minutes faster than Polyrath. Lorelei's team is stacked with bulky water types that Slippy currently doesn't have any good answers to. It takes a minute of some serious back and forth, but her league dugong does fall. Coming into Cloister, you can already start to see my hesitation. Politoed has rocked this game so far, but I have a terrible feeling in my gut that we're about to hit a wall. Cloister has bad special defense, so I chip away with resisted water pulses to attempt to even out PP usage until it falls. Against Slowbro, I continue spamming Water Pulse for awful damage. I'm trying to confuse it here. This isn't going especially my way, so I switch to Psychic, hoping for special defense drops instead. To my surprise, Slowbro just keeps trying to use Yawn against my sub as we slowly chip it down. An even greater surprise is that Lorelei doesn't even use a healing item, and we take it down. Water Pulse is our only move that deals neutral damage to Jinx, so I continue chipping away her until she also falls. Lapras is out last and body slams Politoed until we finally fall, not even having done half damage. Hello, wall. I wipe against her again and decide to grind up to level 53 and then use 7 rare candies bringing us to level 60. Against Dugong you can already see how much better our damage ranges are. I continue slowly chipping away at her Pokémon's health. Fortunately, being behind a substitute, we're protected from most status conditions, and because most of the damage she does to us is resisted, it's an arduous slog, but slowly her Pokémon are fainting. Lapras is out, and with a nice special defense drop from our second Psychic, it's looking like we're going to wear her down before she wears us down. As long as we don't get paralyzed. Good! Lorelei has fallen. Before entering Bruno, I took a quick look at how my power points are doing. Not good! That Lorelei fight took so many turns to finish. Bruno's Onyx falls turn 1, and against Hitmonchan, we aren't doing enough to get a one-shot with Psychic. Please don't heal. Yes! Water Pulse finishes it off. Hitmonlee is the same story, but I should not have used Psychic turn 1. This puts Lee into heal range, and I don't have the PP to spare. We take it down, but only have two Water Pulses and one Psychic remaining. Machamp comes out, and we don't get nearly the damage that we needed, so it takes us out with a cross chop. Alright, so slight spoiler alert, this is when my gameplay with Slippy really starts to fall apart. I'm going to be slowly losing control and not thinking long term. I use an Aether before our next battle, restoring Psychic's PP. I'm still using Psychic against Hitmonchan turn 1, despite knowing that I'll knock it into heal range. Power points. No worries, eh? Against Hitmonlee, I figure it out doing the optimal turn order. Machamp is back, and this time with two Psychics, we're able to take it down. Onyx 2 is a foregone conclusion, so Bruno is defeated. Agatha always has the potential to knock out Pokémon. Against Gengar 1, I sub and I knock it out with two Psychics. Golbat is barely not a one-shot as we continue to spend PP like it's going out of style. Arbok also falls to two Psychics and out comes her Ace Gengar. Thankfully, it misses Hypnosis turn 1 as we hit Psychic for over half and a special defense drop. It uses Sludge Bomb as we knock it out. We come into her final Haunter with only one PP of Psychic left. Like, period. I take a deep breath and we knock it out. Agatha falls on the first attempt, but we are not done this league yet. I use some more Aethers trying to conserve my Elixirs for later, so I guess there was a little bit of forethought. I begin chipping away at the Gyarados, but once again it's clear that if we were a slightly higher level, our damage ranges would be getting the three shot instead of four, or more. It eventually faints with Politoed at only 43 health for the remaining Pokémon. We outspeed and one-shot the following Dragonairs and Dragonite with Ice Beam, leveling up Slippy and bringing us up to 46 health and barely Yellow Bar. Aerodactyl comes out, outspeeds, and finishes us off with a Hyper Beam. I wipe twice more with pretty much the exact same outcome until we finally get the luck we need in this battle. We come out of Gyarados in green health, defeat the others, and now Aerodactyl can no longer take us out. I can't take it out either as we continue wasting PP while Lance heals. Eventually it falls and Politoed has made it to the champion. We have a lot to cover still, so we're going to jump straight ahead by over 25 minutes on the clock and 12 more resets. I actually had to leave the Elite Four to go do more grinding. Keep in mind that our PP restoring items are not coming back. Finally, at level 70 and using the Brute Force playbook, Politoed finally manages to defeat the Round 1 champion, though not by a huge margin at all. 
The worst part about this is that the Pokemon in Round 2 absolutely put Round 1 to shame, and I'll be approaching that section with diminished PP restoring items and low rare candies as I've nearly used all of them at this point. Politoed clocks in with a Round 1 time of 1 hour, 40 minutes, and 19 seconds at level 70 with 22 resets. This took 4 hours and 57 minutes of game time. Well, that was a disappointing league after an outstanding game thus far. Let's see how Polyrath stacks up against the league. Polyrath already has an advantage against Lorelei due to its typing and having a super effective stab move in Brick Break. I set up to plus 4 before knocking down Dugong. Slowbro barely survives a two-shot while our sub does what it does best. On the next turn, I get a critical hit taking it out in one. Polyrath 2 could use a couple of extra levels here. Cloyster wastes a bit of time protecting after I incorrectly predicted protect turn 1. Jinx gets hit for neutral damage, but I feel like we would have taken her out even if she resisted our brick break. Lapras comes out, Lapras goes in. Having a setup move is game changing. Against Bruno I set up to plus 3 against the Onyx and then take it down. I'm not sure what the AI was prioritizing here, maybe Rock Tomb for the speed reduction? But it sends out another Onyx that just gets turned into Water Pulse fodder. Both Hitmons fall and out comes his ace, Machamp. I don't want to overstep so early, but I feel like Brad is having an easier time in here than Slippy. We one-shot the Machamp and move on to Agatha. I sub and I start bulk ups against her. Yes, I'm aware that fighting moves don't hit ghosts. I'm actually setting up because of the Arbok and Golbat. My only move that damages her ghosts is Water Pulse, so it will be in my best interest to use Brick Brace at least against Arbok. Well, that was fun. Gengar 1 is down, but I only have three Water Pulses left. Huh. Golbat has four times resistance against Brick Break, but we're still doing half to it. We take it down, and then out comes Haunter. I decide to play against Sleep Tactics, setting up a sub, barely, bringing us down to three hit points. We take it down, but things are looking a little grim. Our final Water Pulse hits doing sad, sad damage to Gengar, and it finishes us off. I teach Polyrath Psychic over Water Pulse and end up resetting once more against the Arbok because of some accumulated poison damage. As you can see though, with Psychic this battle goes much differently. I actually don't even have to say much here, as we hide behind a sub, knocking out her Pokémon two Psychics at a time. Gyarados is kind of a pain to set up against and will always intimidate us at the start of a battle. I set up three bulk ups so we're at plus two attack and three defense. We continue exchanging moves until we finally knock it down with only 42 hit points. Funny enough, one less than Politoed's first encounter with Gyarados. Aerodactyl comes out, hits with wing attack bringing us down to 12 HP while Polyrath hits a brick break bringing it to deep red. Then Aerodactyl blows us out of the water with a hyper beam. This is where Polyrath leaves the league to train. I come back to Lance at level 69, nice, with the addition of Rock Tomb on my moveset. Yeah, Rock Tomb, from Brock. This time I only set up to plus one against Gyarados before taking it down, then Aerodactyl barely survives but can't do enough damage to knock us out. From there, Dragonite falls to a single Rock Tomb and both Dragonires fall to Brick Break. Polyrath is finally moving on to the champion. Pidgeot remains annoying to set up against, but we manage to get all the way up to plus 6 attack and defense before Brick Break shatters the bird. Alakazam outspeeds, breaking our sub as we take it out. Venusaur comes out and barely survives a Brick Break while it takes in sunlight, setting up Solar Beam. I switch to Rock Tomb and miss. Venusaur takes us down. Pop! Back to Venusaur on the next attempt in better shape with a sub. This time we play smart, not hard, and take it down, leading to easy knockouts against his following Rhydon, Gyarados, and Arcanine. It's so interesting to me that both of these Pokémon got stuck in the league, though at different places, but both made it through at a similar time and level. Polyrath clocks in with a round 1 time of 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 30 seconds, at level 71 with 27 resets. This took 5 hours and 33 minutes of game time. Let's compare how these two did at the finish of round 1. Both Pokémon had a rough Elite Four, and Politoed has managed to maintain its lead but has lost ground against Polyrath. It defeated the champion 9 minutes and 11 seconds ahead of Polyrath, one level lower with less resets. Something tells me though that Polyrath is going to have a much easier time with round 2. Jumping right in, we start against Lorelei's juiced up Dugong. Because of the round 1 struggles and the experience we gained in the Sevi Islands, we're now at level 75. 
I feel like Polyrath has lost enough time throughout this run, so I set all the way up to plus 6 before knocking out Dugong. From there, Jinx, Lapras, the Physical Wall Cloister, and Piloswine all fall to a single Brick Break. Have I mentioned that I love setup moves? Against Bruno, we go for the same strategy. Polyrath has two advantages setting up against Steelix. First, that we're using Bulk Up, so it's doing less damage every turn, and second, that as a fighting type, we resist Rock Tomb, so our sub can sit there tanking damage all day. I set up, again, all the way to plus 6 before taking down Steelix. Then Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, Machamp, and his second Steelix all fall to a single Brick Break. Easy peasy. Against Agatha, we have to use Rock Tomb as Brick Break will not hit her ghosts. Gengar is outspeeding us and confuses us turn 1. After a bit of an exchange, it breaks our sub and then puts us to sleep. ruh -ro. It spams Psychic as Brad takes a nap and knocks us out. I reset two more times against her before leveling up to 78 using the last rare candies that I've been holding on to. My thought process was to get over a damage rounding threshold, but something magical happens instead. We now outspeed her first Gengar. It can always break our subs with one hit, but it seems to want to use Confuse Ray and Hypnosis a lot too, which our sub blocks. I set up to plus 3, Rock Tomb doesn't KO. Plus 4, Rock Tomb barely doesn't KO. Plus 5, and we have a knockout. I set up once more against Arbok, rounding us out to plus 6, and then take it out with a resisted Brick Break. Crobat comes out, outspeeds, and breaks our sub. No worries though, because we take it down with a single Rock Tomb. Mr. Vis goes full troll mode, paralyzing us with Thunderbolt turn 1 and then attracting us. Luckily, we hit through and take it out. All I need is to hit through Paralysis and not miss Gengar. We win! Sweet. Dragon Doctoral Lance's Gyarados is easier to set up than Dragon Master Lance's Gyarados. It keeps spamming Thunder Wave ineffectively against our sub while we set up once again to plus 6. I tried in vain to set up a new sub against Dragonite, but instead go back to full offense, taking out his two Dragonites, Aerodactyl, and finally Kingdra. Another easy league win for Brad. The round 2 champion setup goes just like Bruno. We slowly become more resistant to Heracross's moves while resisting Rock Tomb. We set up again to plus 6 before taking out Heracross. Tyranitar falls to a 4 times super effective Brick Break followed by Arcanine. Alakazam thinks it can set Reflect up against us, but Brad smashes right through that wall taking it down in 1. His Ace Venusaur is out and just barely holds on because it resists Brick Break while it sets up the Sun. Our rival then wastes a bunch of full restores and his Sunlight as we continue to knock Venusaur right back into Red Bar every turn. Because we're faster, we are in no danger here. Venusaur goes down. Gyarados is last, and one final Rock Tomb takes it down. Polyrath has done it. Once we solved that little Agatha problem, this league was a cakewalk for Polyrath. I'm thinking that Slippy is in some serious trouble here. Polyrath clocks in with a round 2 time of 2 hours, 18 minutes, and 49 seconds at level 80 with 30 resets. This took 7 hours and 15 minutes of game time. For Slippy, I did a little extra running around after round 1. I went back to Sylph and further down Route 12 for extra rare candies and an elixir. The only PP restoring items we have coming into this league are 2 max ethers and 1 elixir. Come on Slippy, you can do it. I now also have Earthquake on my moveset as a physical option against Lorelei. Dugong falls to 3 psychics and out comes Lapras. This time, Lapras knows Thunder, an incredibly powerful electric move, but it only has 70% accuracy. I'm trying to use my sub to soak up these Thunders when they hit. We damage Lapras into deep red bar when Lorelei heals it. We're getting a lot of Thunder misses here, so I don't know how sustainable this is going to be. Lapras is now at a range that I feel comfortable going for the KO without resubbing. We don't get the KO and Lapras hits the with Thunder doing massive damage and paralyzing us. We do manage to knock it out, but we are now at a disadvantage for the rest of the fight. Against Cloyster we miss yet another KO range, but luckily we get by knocking it out the following turn. Piloswine comes out, hitting a critical earthquake for big damage. We're doing what looks to be just shy of half damage with Psychic, so I try again, fully paralyzed. Piloswine then gets a second critical hit, knocking out Slippy. I wipe here again, and again, and again. I need a new strategy. Unfortunately, this is where my lack of forethought really starts to pigeonhole Slippy. The only options I have left include Toxic, and I can't believe I'm gonna say it, Double Team. 
With our updated moves, my primary task, aside from being lame, is to make sure that the poison damage is knocking Pokemon out optimally. Against Dugong, I let the poison damage tick until it's just below half health. Poison damage alone will not finish this, so I use a Psychic guaranteeing the knockout. Against Lapras, I want to do the same thing, but this time I focus on keeping a sub on the field. Even with our evasiveness dialed up, a single thunder could end us. Here you can see that I misplayed and the poison damage does not KO Lapras, instead putting it into heal range. Our second round of Toxic against Lapras goes much smoother, so we're moving on. Against Cloyster, because of its weak special defense, I decide to focus on Psychic, missing the one-shot again. On the next turn, Slippy cleans it up. Hylaswine is managed much, much easier this time and brings us to her final Pokémon, Jinx. Psych is doing pathetic damage alone, so we set up Toxic. I don't like this at all. Because we knocked Jinx into an awkward range, she gets a full heal, and we waste some PP before taking her down. So you might just be thinking to yourself, Toxic and Double Team are just going to lame the rest of the league. To which I say, nope. We encounter more problems as my spontaneously created strategy for Lorelei puts us at a serious disadvantage for Bruno. Toxic won't affect either of his Steelixes because they're the Steel type. Also, our only attacking move is Psychic now, which is resisted. I owe Politoed so much better than this. I get some setup in and finally go for Psychic, which does a pathetic amount of damage against Steelix. What am I gonna do now? I burn through my remaining Psychics, and then with Steelix in deep yellow bar, I decide to see how much struggle we'll be doing. Yeah, I'm that desperate at this point. Funny enough, with enough evasion and leftovers, struggle actually takes down Steelix. Alright, I'm gonna accelerate the footage a lot here and see how this goes. We take down Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and finally Machamp all with struggle. When the final Steelix comes out though, it proves to be a little bit too formidable and takes us out. I come back in after replacing Psychic with Surf. Now with a stab, super effective water move, the Steelix sees easies, and the battle go overall significantly smoother. All I was thinking in my head at this point was, I want to start over, but being a first playthrough, I felt I owed it to Slippy to finish the job. Bruno falls. Against Agatha, I'm filled with doubt. We no longer have a super effective move against most of her team, and once we set up our sub, Gengar gets a crit psychic, knocking it out. We no longer have sub PP, so yep, that's a thing. Her Gengars, Crobat, and Arbok are all immune to Toxic as well, so this should be fun. After some setup and a bunch of surfs, we take down Gengar 1. Against Mistrevis, I use Toxic and start using more double teams. My evasiveness is maxed, but I have a sneaking suspicion that I don't have the PP to end this fight without struggle. I then take it out, followed by Arbok, who I annoyingly miss with a surf because of double team. The irony. Her Ace Gengar is out and we use our last surf, bringing it to about a quarter health. From there, we go waste our remaining PP, but Gengar has other ideas. Despite my evasion, it hits three Thunderbolts in a row, taking us out. That's only a 3.6% chance of happening. I decide to use one of my Max Ethers to restore the PP of Substitute and try again. Behind a sub, this battle goes much differently. By the end of the Mischievous, we're at Max Evasion with a sub on the field and Max Health. We take out the Arbok and Gengar, leading us to Crobat, with only one Surf remaining. I use it, hoping beyond hope that we'd take it out, and it doesn't. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. I then waste all of our remaining PP against Crobat and eventually, finally, take it out with Struggle. But we still have two incredibly challenging battles, and we're pretty darn near out of options. I take a quick reset against Lance because I forgot to restore my PP. I have to let you in on my mindset during these last few battles. Not good and getting worse. I feel like I've let Politoed down so much at this point and I'm just trying to find a way through. Using the same strategy that I used against Lorelei, I start chipping away at Lance's team. It gets a little grim halfway through against the lower level Dragonite, but we make it through Lance. Against the champion, I use my two final rare candies, bringing us to level 80 and attempt the same strategy. This is how it goes. Very, very badly. I set up and end up knocking Heracross into heal range. It then gets put back to full as I use Surf, bringing it below half. Okay, I might be able to take out the Heracross at least. Nope. The rival withdraws it and sends in Venusaur to tank our second last Surf. It's immune to Toxic, so we have one more Surf to defeat this thing. Not likely. We get poisoned by Sludge Bomb, and combined with Recoil from Struggle, we get knocked out again. 
I try in vain one more time, but we do get further into the fight. Now I have to admit something. I gave up. There wasn't a single solution based on what I had available that wouldn't destroy my last chance that Politoed had to defeat this league without leveling up 20 more times. I don't even know if that would do it. Even if we did level up, I don't think we have the PP restoring items to complete the league. So, with a regret-filled press of the button, I shut down the game, and I put Slippy into A save. We come back in at the same level with a moveset of Ice Beam, Psychic, Substitute, and HP Electric. No other changes. With this moveset, we start brute forcing our way through the champion's Pokemon. Near the end, the Arcanine does knock us down into Red Bar at only 36 HP, but we do take the victory. I am so disappointed in myself. This was by far the worst performance that I've had in a run, and it doesn't reflect anything about Politoed's abilities. Politoed clocks in with a round 2 finish of 2 hours, 25 minutes, and 37 seconds at level 80 with 32 resets. This took 6 hours and 56 minutes of game time. Time for some testing, and then playthrough 2, where I'm going to show you what a real Politoed run looks like. For our initial playthroughs, it would seem that Polyrath regained the lead in the end game. Politoed struggled so much with the Elite Four. Our final times are 2 hours, 25 minutes, and 37 seconds for Politoed, and 2 hours, 18 minutes, 49 seconds for Polyrath, taking the win by 6 minutes and 48 seconds. But let's face it, the real results are yet to come. Because we're already aware of how quickly both of these Pokémon can smash through the gym challenge, I'll quickly discuss what I changed in these runs, and then jump right back into the League battles. Polyrath takes its first reset early against Rival 2. I thought that going for sleep on the Pidgeotto would be better, but ended up missing Hypnosis twice and getting Sand Attacked twice. That eventually leads to defeat. I switch back into going with Ice Ball turn 1, and that solves the battle. I'm defeating Rival 2 first this time, as Misty was a little risky when we first entered Cerulean. I'll use the Water Pulse TM to replace Water Gun, giving us lots of Power Point longevity. The next major change is that both Pokémon will be catching a cheer squad of Meowths. Given our last run was saved by Rock Tomb, solving Polyrath's run was easy. Just get Hidden Power Rock. Hidden Power is a move that is a different type and power based on your Pokémon's IVs or individual values. These are randomly generated when a Pokémon is created, assigning a value between 0 and 31 for each stat. For Hidden Power Rock, with 70 base power, Polyrath has perfect IVs in HP, Attack, and Special Attack, with 30 in Defense, Special Defense, and Speed. Coming into Lavender Town, I pick up TM27 Return from the Southern Gatehouse. Polyrath's moveset for the majority of the mid-game will be Brick Break, Return, and Water Pulse. The fourth move, Hypnosis, really doesn't get much use. From there, I defeat the Rocket Hideout, Pokémon Tower, and jump into Sylph. In Sylph, I'm grabbing all of the high-value items but dodging as many trainers as I can. I want my experience and EVs elsewhere. I then clear the Fighting Dojo in Saffron and head down Cycling Road. On Cycling Road, I defeat every single trainer while picking up the hidden Rare Candy, Full Restore, PP Up, and Max Elixir. I teach Substitute, clear the Safari Zone, and then Koga's Gym for our fourth Gym Badge. I then clear Erika, following the left path for Attack EVs. I didn't do any extra grinding in these gyms. Just before Koga, I found TM10 Hidden Power, so now in Rival 5, we see Polyrath's endgame moveset at work. Brick Break, HP Rock, Bulk Up, and Substitute. From there, it's Sabrina, and then Blaine, skipping all of the trainers in both gyms. I clear all of the trainers in Giovanni's gym, and then the man himself. Polyrath completes the gym challenge at 1 hour and 6 minutes, just under 2 minutes faster than before, with much better league prep. Rival 6 is easy, so that brings us to the League. Lorelei is up first, and my strategy this time is to set up to plus 5 against each League member, balancing our PP usage. Lorelei is no problem for Polyrath. I'm skipping Bruno because he's pretty much free for Polyrath. With HP Rock on our side, we have a strong physical move against Agatha's physically weaker Pokémon. Because setup is nearly free against her first Gengar, she's another easy sweep. Dragon Master Lance's Gyarados is somewhat annoying to set up against. I set up to plus 3 attack and plus 4 defense because of being hit by Intimidate before taking it out. Aerodactyl outspeeds and does some damage with wing attack, but from there, once again, it's a sweep. And suddenly, it's round 1 champion time. Polyrath is cruising. I used 5 rare candies after Lance, bringing us to level 68 for the champion fight. This allows us a bit more bulk and speed so we can set up more consistently against Pidgeot. Then, once again, it's a series of one-shots. If it hadn't been for that silly reset against Rival 2, this would have been a perfect run so far. Stupid sand attack. 
Polyrath clocks in with a round 1 time of 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 36 seconds at level 69, nice, with only one reset. This took 4 hours and 52 minutes of game time. This is over 30 minutes faster than last playthrough, setting a high bar for Politoed to overcome. Polyrath's first major change after catching a bunch of Meowths is grabbing an additional TM on the SSN, Brick Break. This move was Polyrath's bread and butter for most of the run and has an interesting use for Politoed later on. Politoed grabbed Meowths not for hidden power, but actually for money. In the 5% drop rate cluster is the chance to get nuggets. Politoed needs the cash, so I figured the time investment would be worth it overall. I also had a slight misplay, so when I come back to Cerulean to grab the bike, I quickly shoot north of Nugget Bridge to grab TM45 Attract. This move is why we're running a female Politoed. I also grab TM27 Return with Politoed and keep it as mixed attacker through most of the mid game. Being a high power, high PP move, I use it a lot against the filler Pokemon in like rocket teams like Rattatas and Zubads. I cleared out all of the trainers in Pokemon Tower for the special attack EVs on the way to Sylph. I collect all of the high value items with Politoed as well. Poliwrath's mid game focused on buying vitamins, first Carbos and then Protein. Politoed is focused more on cold hard cash, saving for Ice Beam, and then focusing on Carbos for speed and Calcium for special attack. Politoed is going to attempt Rival 5 now to avoid backtracking. This fight goes okay, but we're taking a little bit too much damage for my liking, particularly against the Gyarados. In hindsight, I did have HP Electric sitting in my bag, which I could have taught over Hypnosis. That would have made this fight much more consistent because we come into Alakazam at 3 hit points. So I have to go for a Hail Mary play here, trying to put it to sleep, and we do! We get in some hard-hitting returns that look to be doing around half, and I don't quite get the kill, oh no. It wakes up and uses Future Sight! We knock it down, and wow, that was a little close for comfort. I then defeat all of the trainers in Sabrina's gym for special attack and special defense EVs before taking her out easily with Return and Psychic for Venomoth. Even Alakazam's crit Psychic wasn't enough to take us down. Then I do Fuchsia, Teaching Substitute, and Taking Out Koga. I then grab the Coin Case and defeat Erika, following the right path for special attack EVs. Then it's a big shopping trip, buying the vitamins I can afford and leaving 80k for Ice Beam. We're off to Cinnabar where I clear all of the trainers in Blaine's gym. Blaine himself is easy with Water Pulse carving through his team. I didn't quite get the one shot against Arcanine, but he uses Takedown, resulting in his own recoil damage, taking him down. Ha! <laughs> I clear all of the trainers in Giovanni's gym and then the man himself. Politoed finishes the gym challenge at 1 hour and 27 seconds, just over 7 minutes slower than last time, but once again with way, way, way better prep going into the league. I use 6 rare candies bringing Politoed to level 65 before Lorelei. I also teach Brick Break that we picked up on the SSN. Brick Break does work against Lorelei's whole team with the exception of Slowbro that I switched to Psychic for. Remember sitting here for minutes at a time wasting PP last run? This is much, much better. Yes, even better than HP Electric, which I had considered. Bruno is also much smoother. Being at level 65 now allows us to hit much better ranges against him. I set up a sub turn 1 for safety and then go all offense. The Hitmons are still surviving a single Psychic, barely. They take a little extra PP to defeat, but that's fine. Another thing I did was collect a ton of PP ups throughout the run so that Ice Beam and Psychic are maxed. The only damage Bruno did was what I did to myself setting up a sub. At this higher level, Agatha is also much more consistent. A turn 1 sub for safety, then Psychic one-shots her Gengar. The crit didn't matter here. Golbat falls, and against Arbok, I decide to use two Ice Beams to balance my PP usage. Psychic one-shots the Ace Gengar, and Haunter refuses to go down to Ice Beam. That's okay though, I should only need four for the next battle. Before Lance, I equip a Citrus Berry for safety. Gyarados is a dangerous lead for us. I'm setting up subs when they break because it's an overall reduction in damage, especially if he decides to use Double Bite or anything that isn't Dragon Rage, really. Unfortunately, we don't quite get the range on Aerodactyl, and because of our low PP, Politoed takes its first reset. I use an elixir, and this time the fight goes much smoother. I even make it past the Gyarados with much higher health so that when we come back to Aerodactyl it has no shot, with us even surviving a crit. I chip with Brick Break and then knock it out with Ice Beam. 
Against the champion, I set up a sub and then start blasting away at his Pokémon. He switches into Venusaur on an Ice Beam, sweet play dude, so once we knock it out and Pidgeot falls, we're in really good shape for the next four Pokémon. Alakazam can't break our sub with a single Psychic, so we should be safe here. I get a little rash going for the kill here instead of setting up a new sub. Rhydon also falls to a single Ice Beam. We take some serious damage against Gyarados, but manage to knock it out as well. Unfortunately, the Arcanine has priority, extreme speed, and finishes us off. Now, I tested this fight... a bunch. We should have been fine, but instead I get a series of battles, all of which had awful luck. As I watch the clock tick up, I get frustrated to the point where I cast my routing aside and use rare candies all the way up to level 75 after resetting seven times. Brutal. We finally managed to take him down in this fight, but barely, with Politoed hanging on from the last turn at only 10 HP, 0.04% of our max health. Well, that sucked, but we're moving on. Politoed is down, but not out of this race yet. Politoed clocks in with a round one time of 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 40 seconds at level 75 with 8 resets, 88% of which were against the champion. This took 4 hours and 35 minutes of game time. At the end of the gym challenge, Politoed was leading by 5 minutes and 53 seconds, but by the end of the league and after all those darn resets against the champion, it falls behind, only 2 minutes and 4 seconds behind Poliwrath going into round 2. So without any further gilding of the lily, let's jump in to the round 2 Elite Four. <laughs> I've kept Brick Break specifically for Lorelei again. Her team is quite bulky overall, so maximizing our damage output with a super effective physical move is preferable. It's also why I kept Politoed as a neutral nature, serious. In this battle, things are going fairly smoothly until the Lapras refuses to miss a 70% accurate Thunder. We do take another reset here. In the next battle though, Lapras cooperates more and misses only one Thunderbolt. We tank another as Lapras falls. From there, Cloyster almost falls to a single shot, not quite. Piloswine takes two Psychics, and finally, Jink takes neutral damage from Brick Break, but is so physically frail that she faints in two as well. Round 2 Bruno is an absolute slugfest. We're both dealing moderate to high amounts of damage to each other, and this fight is a race to the finish. Can we outdamage Bruno? Yes, yes we can. I end up getting a nice critical hit on the final Steelix, but I don't think its Earthquake would have knocked us out without a crit of its own. Agatha was a bit of a problem to solve initially. I found out that as long as I outspeed the first Gengar, the fight becomes reasonably consistent. Getting hit by a Hypnosis or Confuse Ray was just too much to handle. Mistrevis could have presented more of a problem with it attracting us turn 1, but we managed to get by it with it only breaking our sub. Arbok is out and I re-establish my sub while it's setting up double teams. This results in a few misses from Politoed as I use Brick Break for some chip damage and then Psychic for the KO. Psychic just barely doesn't one-shot the Ace Gengar, but after Agatha heals it to full, we get the better range and it falls. Against Crobat, it's the same story with us barely not being able to knock it out in one. But after a couple of Ice Beams, it also falls. I use an elixir, and now it's time for Dragon Doctoral Lance. His Gyarados is a much easier lead with Substitute on our side, so we take it down with full health and a sub up. His two Dragonites both get outsped and one shot. Kingdra definitely has the potential to knock us out if I stay in against it too long. We take it out after a few turns, and the Aerodactyl also barely hangs on from a super effective Ice Beam. We also get the freeze against it. Totally unnecessary, but awesome. Alright, this is where Politoed had the most trouble. Champion 2 has such a difficult team to play around for a solo Pokémon. We finally teach Politoed its strongest stab move in Surf over Ice Beam and Attract over Brick Break. I also use my last two rare candies that I went out of my way to collect on Route 12 and Sevi Island number 2. This battle took forever to crack, so here's hoping all of my hard work pays off. Let's get it. Heracross leads and I figure my best shot through it was to sub and psychic it down. I'm not relying 100% on attract luck to get through this fight, like in the Chinchow video. It goes down, leading us into Tyranitar. It just barely survives our surf, allowing it to break our sub. I predict to heal correctly, so I re-establish our sub on the field. Our second surf gets the range and knocks it down. 
Because of our high health, Venusaur wants to set up Sunny Day and blast away with Solar Beams. We're doing enough damage that even with the health it recovers from its held Citrus Berry, we are very comfortably in two-shot range. And now, without that Sandstorm neutralizing our leftover recovery. Alakazam is out, and this is where Attract comes into play. If I can avoid enough damage from it, we should have this battle. We get excellent luck, and Alakazam is immobilized three turns in a row. We didn't need it to be this good, but what the heck, I'm in. Three surfs, drop it. Against Gyarados, I have a slight misplay. I should have used Attract against it turn one as well to cut its consistency. This costs us big time in our health pool as it fires off a plus one hyper beam against our egg-sposed Politoed for massive damage. It isn't immobilized by L love once, but we managed to take it down with 135 health going into Arcanine. We recover from leftovers barely into green health. Oh yeah, we got this. It uses extreme speed, taking us back into yellow, but a single surf takes down Arcanine. Politoed has done it. This was such a better run for Politoed. I actually stressed about and therefore procrastinated and pondered and tested this run for nearly a week in between other things. ADHD life! Politoed clocks in with a round 2 finish of 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 41 seconds at level 84 with 9 resets. This took 6 hours and 5 minutes of game time. Comparing Politoed's two runs, I managed to make some incredible improvements. In round 1, we managed to save 21 minutes and 39 seconds with 14 less resets, although we did finish at a higher level. In round 2, we almost double that, saving 42 minutes and 56 seconds with 23 less resets, finishing 4 levels higher. Despite our resets against the round 1 champ, I'd say this is an incredibly solid performance from Politoed. Can Polyrath beat it? Let's jump straight into Polyrath's Round 2 League. Polyrath has a slight advantage in its ability to use a setup move, but setup moves aren't always faster. Because of the additional 5 turns every battle that I'm using to set up, the battles may be more consistent, but they're not that much faster. Leave your brooms at home, everyone. Polyrath has got this sweep. I'm following the same strategy as the previous League, set up to plus 5 and sweep for both Lorelei and Bruno. Bruno wasn't worth showing in round 1, and the round 2 Bruno fight is somehow even easier because of our recovery from our held leftovers. Agatha was actually the battle that gated this League for Polyrath. Similarly to Politoed, I discovered that as long as I had enough speed to outspeed the lead Gengar, we should win. Otherwise, it's nearly impossible. This Gengar has 170 speed, so we need a minimum of 156 to win this fight, with which our badge boost from Surge becomes 171. I use two rare candies, so we have 157 speed coming into this fight. Therefore, I win! With the Thunder Waving Gyarados out front, we get an easy setup against Dragon Doctoral Lance. With our setup complete and HP Rock on our side, the entirety of Lance's team falls one after the other. Polyrath, you beast. Now I take one final moment to double check everything before launching into the round 2 champion battle. Checks across the board, so let's bring this one home. This battle is a piece of cake for Polyrath. The only reason we had to level up to the point that we did was to outspeed Agatha's lead. I get one of my easiest setups to date against Heracross, and then it's a whole bunch of watching health bars melt. What a run. Polyrath's second playthrough was a piece of cake to rout. I knew that Rock Tomb won against the Leagues, so having HP Rock with 20 more power and 20 more accuracy could only end well. Polyrath clocks in with a round 2 time of 1 hour, 38 minutes, and 15 seconds at level 78 with still only one reset. This took 6 hours and 15 minutes of game time. Let's compare Polyrath's runs before I reveal the race results. In round 1, we saved 32 minutes and 54 seconds with 26 less resets and 2 levels lower. In round 2, we saved, funny enough, 42 minutes and 56 seconds. The exact same amount as Polytoad. What? We did this with 29 less resets and still 2 levels lower. Our race results are as follows. Politoed had a commanding lead coming out of the gym challenge, but due to the number of resets against the champion, it lost its lead by a margin of 2 minutes and 4 seconds. By the end of the round 2 champion, Polyrath's ability to set up sets it apart with a winning time 4 minutes and 26 seconds faster than Politoed. For my own edification, I went back and timestamped the resets against the round 1 champ. Politoed started the first champ at 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 18 seconds, then started its final attempt at 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 41 seconds. This means that we lost 6 minutes and 23 seconds resetting here. So, Politoed could have won this race. 
I wanted to play it again, but unfortunately I do have to sleep now and then, and this project has been a huge amount of work already. For today though, Polyrath takes the crown, not only because of its faster completion time, but because it was a much more consistent run. At Pokedex number 62 though, it is conclusively not three times better than Politoed at 186. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about these two. I find it so interesting how these two seem so similar, diverge in strategy entirely after the early game, and then converge at the end with nearly identical finish times being possible. I'll be ranking Polyrath and Politoed just below Clefable. They also get a shiny star, indicating that they started their run fully evolved with an egg move. As always, if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. I have to apologize for any audio quality inconsistencies in this video. A joy of living in Canada is that after figuring out recording around the furnace, the season shifted overnight, and now I have to deal with the AC unit going directly outside my window. I'll come up with something before the next video. But that wraps us up for today. If you feel like I've earned it, please leave a like and comment about what videos you'd like to see in the future. As always, substrats, best strats, so if you'd like to see more of my content, subscribe and ring the bell. Until next time, take care everyone.